Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? I am continuing on with the ploughing, joining these fields in together, and I think I'm making good progress. I've done a little bit over on the next fields that I said that I would go to, and I've joined field over there, and I've now done the join just here. There is actually more to this than I first thought there would be, and also we forgot a tree. I actually left an entire tree here all on its lonesome when we were going around with our tree shredder and I've no idea how I managed to overlook this tree. So there's a whole tree here. So that is what I'm going to do first. I'm actually going to cut this one up and I'm going to just chuck it back here out the way. Um, I was wondering about bringing it in here and then cutting, you know, trimming the logs down so that the wood chips get sold but I'm not actually going to worry about that. What I will do is just chop the tree up into smaller pieces and just stack it up against this fence so that it's out the way. We might do something with it later. But anyway, um, my weekly question for this week. We are moving to South America soon. And when we get to South America, I'm going to do my very, very best, my absolute level best to try to only use machinery from a single brand. Uh, I will prioritize using machines from the DLC. Uh, that goes that sort of goes without saying. Like the, the DLC will have priority over all else. But beyond the DLC, I will try to use everything from a single brand. So what brand would you like me to use? What brand would you like to see used almost exclusively in South America? Would you like it to be John Deere? Would you like it to be Case? Would you like it to be New Holland? Would you like it to be Massey Ferguson? Or would you like it to be Deutz? It's your vote. It's your game. Head in the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And I feel that this particular vote could cause some strong feelings in certain people. Um, especially considering that I am this time offering John Deere as one of the options. So. I suspect John Deere will win the vote, um, that is my personal suspicion, um, however, if you really don't want John Deere to win the vote, you, you have the power to be able to do something about it. Get into the comments section and tell us why you don't think John Deere should win. Tell us why you think one of the other ones should win. Um, my own personal preference. I'm genuinely torn between, because I like John Deere machines, um, I don't like the company itself, I don't like the, um, I don't like their approach to customer service to be honest. Um, so yeah, I, I like John Deere, but I don't like jo the, the John Deere company and their, um, their, their approach to things. And I mean, admittedly, I haven't used John Deere machine, any new John Deere machines for probably a decade now. Um, but I grew up learning to drive, some of the first tractors I drove were John Deere tractors. I grew up driving a couple of different John Deere tractors and for most of the time that I worked on farms, it was very few farms I worked on that didn't actually have a John Deere there somewhere. John Deere was always like, it was the, the treat. You, you got to drive the John Deere if you'd proven yourself worthy because it was the the luxury vehicle. It was the luxury choice rather than the, the bog standard choice. And so I've got fond memories of John Deere. I spent a lot of time driving those machines um, and using, you know, doing all kinds of different things with them. I haven't had very much to do with any other John Deere implements apart from one John Deere small baler and one John Deere mower and those were again they, they were brilliant they were very well made they were robust and they did absolutely everything that you could ever hope for from a small baler and from a mower so personally I got no problem with the machinery itself I just have I just don't particularly like their approach to customer service and the way that they protect their brand uh, so aggressively um other other brands seem to be a lot more open to sort of sort of sharing and uh, open to collaboration in the marketplace, whereas John Deere don't seem to be quite so much, in my opinion. So I'm I'm kind of torn. Um, out of the options I've given, my personal preference is either John Deere or Massey Ferguson. Um, and because I haven't used either John Deere or Massey Ferguson a great deal, uh, I'm genuinely not too fussed either way. I like both of them. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's my personal preference. So, 
um, but the other brands are good as well. I've used Case a little bit, not a great deal, I must admit. Um, Deutz, I have never, well, I, I've used a little bit, again, um, and I have told you about my experiences with the Deutz. It was an air-cooled engine, and I didn't like the tractor very much at all. Um, and that's the only Deutz machine that I've ever driven, so I've, I've not had a great deal to do with Deutz itself. Um, but in the game, I can see from the actual tractors that we're using in the game, because I know that they're based on real ones, um, I know that they are they are good quality machines. So there's no reason to think that there's um, that they are bad machines. So I've got no problem with those machines at all, and um, with Deutz in general, I think I think that they're very good. Right, I'm trying to get this. If I can just sort of spin it round a little bit so that I can clean just that last little bit off. Is that it? I don't want leaves left on. There we go. Right, let's bring that one over. This one's still too heavy, so I want to chop this one in half. And I can take most of the rest. We've just got the big log now. It's like the main trunk, and that's always going to be the very heavy bit. So if I chop that one, I reckon about there. Take one slice off. And then the main trunk is going to be the more difficult bit to remove. But we shouldn't have too much trouble doing it. So we can bring this over here. Ooh. Lob, <laughs> lob it over there like that. I'm very tempted to go and get the... You know the fireplace that we installed in... Really? That one's too heavy. It's, it's got to be fractionally too heavy. I can't see it's very... Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's particularly big. Um, yeah, that little fireplace that we had installed in Sosnyovka. Um... I thought that one was quite good. I was seriously considering getting that and installing it against the fence here so that we could put this tree into the um, into the log burner. But it, it sort of seemed like it would be a bit out of place, just stuck here in the middle of nowhere. So um, I ultimately decided against it. But, I mean, we, could, we still could. It could be an outdoor sort of burner in order to provide heat for that block of flats over there. So that, that could actually be a, sort of a feasible thing if it's used to heat the water i mean it's it's unlikely that you would have the actual burning of wood and stuff so far away from the structure because there would be heat loss on that and it wouldn't be particularly um economical so probably not but there is the possibility but that's that's going to be something that you know and and if we've got time later on type thing because at the moment we definitely don't have time for it we want to get through and we want to move this as quickly as we can this is a big log this is this is really big so I'm going to move, actually I'm going to get this one all sliced up now and then I will get back to you once we've got this all into logs about this big so that we can chuck the rest of them against the fence and get on with our ploughing. Well that job wasn't quick because, um, you, yeah, cutting up these logs you've got to get them small enough so that you can pick them up and that's great and all but you kind of forget the amount of weight that is actually in the trees. And that is one thing that uh, Farming Simulator seems to have gotten right this time round, in that they've got the weight of the logs pretty accurate. Because you can see just from... I'm throwing these. I'm throwing each and every one of them. And you can see from what I'm picking up, it's not easy to throw the heavy ones. It, it, they really don't like to be, to be lobbed at all. So I've had to cut these strips here. I've, I've cut them down quite narrow, into, in, just into round. I can't even throw these. They're that heavy. So I've cut them into rounds, and so they could they could go straight for the axe. You you just um, get the axe going straight on those, split them all up into firewood for the fire. Now, obviously, we can't actually use an axe in this game, but one thing that we can do with this game is we can get a we can use the saw, and we can use the chainsaw and cut it straight down across the top. And I think I actually did that at the end of last week. So I'm not going to be doing that today. I am just going to move these back a little bit further so that they're out the way. And then we can get the plow going. I was hoping at some point this week to... Uh, at some point, I say. Uh, I was hoping at some point this episode that we could start jumping forward a little bit in time and get some snow. Now, tomorrow is not going to be snow, but there is forecast for snow on the third day of winter a third of six so hopefully we'll get a bit of snow on the ground and we can go and do a little bit of snow plowing and with our machine that we had going yesterday with the the mill there we go i can just push being able to bulldoze them all is actually quite good it's kind of a little bit cheaty i guess but um there's one thing they don't have is um the game like forcing you to let go if you're pushing against too much weight so we don't have to right hang on I wanted to go there. 
yeah, so anyway, um, we, we don't have to, we, we can sort of use that and bulldoze up a huge, great big pile, which is actually really, really cool. I was just looking at this, we, that's a stump there, so we're just going to have to come round that carefully. I'm going to sort of bring a line across there. We'll just plough all these wood chips in, and so we won't actually be using them. So if I come up here, and I think actually if I start from this end, I can sort of see where the stump is going to be. And we can plow in from there. I'm going to have to take this very carefully because I do not want to get too close to that stump. I'm sort of thinking that I'm not going to attempt to come down here and grind that stump off. And I, I think I did go a little bit too close there. I mean, I'll end up having to nurse it around this corner anyway because of the way that um, the AI works. And it will try to run it into that fence. So we will have to manually drive the combine around this corner and all the rest of it as well. And just about everything will have to be manually moved around that corner. So I don't think it's going to be any major issues with it. So we can just move that along there. Come back one more. And I'm not actually too worried about the wood chips being there either. Because those... Um, they'll, they'll get uh, cultivated in with the direct seed drill that we're going to be using. We're going to use... I think we'll just use the, the stand... Oh, no, no, no. We're not using the Vardastad. We, um, I was thinking of using the Vardastad, the 6-meter one, but we're not going to. We're going to use the Horsch, the 9-meter one. That also fertilizes at the same time. So we do everything all in one hit, and then we don't need to worry about any of the rest of it. Um, it'll all be done. So the only thing that we then have to do after that is get forward to harvest time. We should be okay for time. We're in second week in October now, so by my calculations, we got um, two more weeks in October. And well, actually, we're going to have three more weeks in October because it was because of the way that October has worked out. We're going to end up with three weeks in October, and then I think it'll be one week in November. So I think we've got four weeks. After this week, we've got four more weeks, I believe. We may have more. We may have five weeks before the Platinum DLC. So in four weeks, we've got to get everything planted, and we want to get through with the harvester as well. We want to go through the combine and at least get some of this combine. I'd like to get all of it done. But if we can't get all of it, I at least want some of it done. So we do need to... We, we're on a tight schedule, and we do need to remember that at all times when we're doing our work here. So we've got a road there that we can't do anything with. Um, so that's a separate field. If I just turn off the allow create field in case the plough touches the ground there. And move over into this piece. And... Right, this one actually, we've got quite a bit that we do need to do in this field. So we can start here. I was hoping to do snow today. I was, I was hoping to do that in today's episode. So what I might actually do... Oop, I forgot to allow the create fields. Ignore the reversing with the plough in the ground. That didn't happen. It was just a figment of your imagination and it did not happen. Okay? Um, right. I was kind of hoping to do some snow and stuff today. So what I think we'll do is we'll start fast forwarding time right now just like that we'll work this on 120 times speed and we'll keep working this on 120 times speed until we either need to stop to top the animals up again or we need to or we can uh, deal with some snow so if i actually i'm gonna have to do another pass along here just to get it wide enough for the plow to sit down on the ground properly so if i just move over this way and we're gonna work through the night tonight i think actually no we won't It'll be faster if we just skip the night. It's much better if we skip the night because then we can move on to um, the actual snow stuff faster. And it might be that as soon as it does get um, another day through into winter and the ground freezes, we have to stop doing the ploughing anyway. So we'll have to we'll commence the ploughing next spring before we go planting everything else. And then we've got to decide what we're going to plant. I'm not going to have a very wide variety of crops. I'm thinking. Wheat, barley and canola will be all we do. We won't do any more than that. Just wheat, barley and canola to keep it nice and simple. And I'll do it in three big blocks. Um, and then we don't... It's, nothing's going to be sort of complicated or anything like that. So if we just turn on all the lights. Light it up like a Christmas tree. We gotta, we, you got to run through until 8 o'clock. Um, you can't fast forward time until you get to 8 o'clock. As soon as you get then through spring... And autumn and winter, 8 o'clock is the time that you can fast forward time. Well, late spring. Late spring, it starts to move on a little bit later. But through the summer, you can't fast forward time at 8 o'clock. You've got to wait until like half 8. I think later on in the summer, you've actually got to wait until um, 10 o'clock before you can actually fast forward the time. But all of them, you, you've got to wait until 8 o'clock in the evening before you can do any time fast forwarding at all. 
So let's just move that one up to there, and I think that'd be about right. It's not exactly even there, but I that'll be okay. We we can live with that little bit there. And back up a little bit. That one's actually that's gonna join in together quite nicely. Although I suspect the steep bank right on the edge of the field right behind us, just over there, is it might cause a problem for the combine. Um I don't think it'll cause a problem for the sea drill. I think the drill will be just fine. It'll cope with that without any problems. But I do think the combine... I thought I lifted that up. I do apologise. I know I did one bit where I was backing the plough in the ground, but that was uh, deliberate. That bit then, that, that wasn't deliberate. There's, there's only so many times you can do things before people start to think, well, hang on a minute. Now you're just being ridiculous. Reversing with the plough in the ground once is okay, but we can't be, we can't be putting up with that nonsense all the time, you know, Frith. You, you do have to show a little sense and uh, a, a little bit of decorum every now and then. No, 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 I don't, I don't want to switch. I don't want to switch again. Right, we'll stop here a minute and we'll fast forward through the night. So we go Alt-N to do that. There we go, resting for another day at the farm. And as soon as it's finished. So what it does, it fast forwards it at, I think it's 600 times speed or 1200 times speed, something like that. And it goes really fast all the way through the night. And then as soon as the night is finished, it then um, lets everything catch up all over again so at the moment we've got 48,000 coming in through sold milk not that it makes a big amount of difference to us with the amount of money that we've got but do not fear because once we've um progressed a little bit once once we move on to the next map we're not going to have that massive great big amount of money available to us at all times the big amount of money will become a much smaller amount of money and it will go sort of We'll go back to sort of farming normally rather than having this massive amount of money available. We'll be using some of the money, kind of continuing our narrative of setting up a farm for educational purposes and in collaboration with some big corporations, including Case and Massey Ferguson, who are going to be providing us with some of the machinery that we'll be first using later on we have to be able to pay for stuff ourselves. We've got to be able to make the farm work and we've got to be able to make the farm a viable economic enterprise because obviously farming has to be uh, a viable thing to do. You, you've got to be able to do it. Otherwise, um, you, you, if you can't make any money from it, there's no point in continuing. So that's what we will be doing. We will be aiming to make money from our farm. So we'll get ourselves set up with machinery and with land. And then after that, we're on our own. We, we've got to make that pay. So we'll be selling our sugar cane and anything else that we might be making as well interested to see how the sugar cane is processed and sold and what you've got to do with it all the planters and the traders and everything that are coming that we're seeing now through the um the the friday fact sheets that it is that they they drip feed us from now until when it's all released they look absolutely amazing the, the different things that we're seeing unlike anything i've ever seen before it looks amazing it looks absolutely fantastic and I'm so, so looking forward to it. It's going to be absolutely awesome to be able to use this stuff. It really is. It's going to be fantastic. Right. Our productivity is down to 73%. And in part, that's because our cleanliness is at 3%. So we do need to go and have a little bit of a tidy up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that tractor right there for a second. Just switch it off. And we're going to go over here to this one. And we're just going to... Actually, no, we're not going to use that one. We're going to go and use this one because we, we it's a bigger machine, so we can use more of it. And we're going to use this to clean the cows. I think that it's just because they're dirty. Yes, it is just because they're dirty. The silage and hay is halfway, so there's actually enough to last until tomorrow, and then we're going to have to start feeding them a bit extra, which means more trailer loads of stuff from the shop, and we'll bring it down here. The silage is not actually going to last us very much longer. We've got some there, but we don't have a massive great big quantity of it. So we're just going to have to watch that. Keep a close eye on how much we've got. Um, now, the interesting thing, when you're in winter with seasons, you don't have grass being tipped in front of the cows. It's always hay that is tipped in front of the cows rather than grass. And so you've got to, you've got to take that and you've got to tip it back in. But at the same time, you've also got to remember that you're not getting the grass. You're not getting that um, extra bit of you know, free grass coming through. But also on top of that, um, when it changes over from autumn to winter, you'll have some grass there on the ground. And you'll also then get hay coming out from the trough. And it can be a little bit of a nuisance because you've got to sort of separate the two out. Unless you just leave it for a while and not worry anything about it at all. 
and come back to it later on and clean it up. So, I mean, we've just put now 6,000 litres of hay into the feed trough, so that should actually keep them going for a little bit longer. It should definitely make sure that they go through until tomorrow. The first transition in winter is actually the best time to be selling crops, um, or at least some of the crops. The, the wheat, canola, barley is definitely the best time to first transition. Some of them it's the second transition in winter, and a couple of them it's the third transition in winter. Winter is when you get your best prices all around anyway. You definitely you want to be selling stuff in the winter, not any other time of the year. If you look at the prices right now, so that's looking pretty good there. That'll keep them going until tomorrow. And prices at the moment, we have wheat and barley and canola are all looking pretty good. It's 1,700 there. And some of these, I mean, we've got 800 per 1,000 litres there for barley. That's pretty good as well. I'm not, because of the massive amount of money that we've got, I'm not going to worry about selling crops uh, for the rest of this series unless, unless we've got like a little bit of extra time in order to do something like that. I'm not too concerned about it because it's not really going to be a priority um, with like the narrative that we've got going with this. I don't think that it um, will make any difference to how we progress things. Let's lift that plough out of the ground, shall we? And it's already the following night. So tomorrow we should get snow. Now it's taken a lot longer than I originally anticipated. I thought that I would be finished with this. I failed to I actually failed to sort of appreciate just how big a job it was over here um, because, yeah, I, I forgot the number of fields that we had to join together over on this side. And I also forgot that tree. We did also have that tree that we had to deal with. And, well, I didn't forget. I just overlooked the tree completely, didn't I? So we do have a part of a stump here that was sticking out of the ground. Uh, so we're going to need to sort of come round that one. It's right there, so I'm going to keep a tractor's width away from that one. If I keep about there, I think that'd be about right. So we can lower that in and just cut a straight line straight up across there. I don't need to do anything other than that because when the combines come through here, they're going to be trying to sort of hug into that anyway because of the AI vehicle extension. So we'll have to manually nurse them around that corner. Just come up and do this bit. But so far, all of the others, that there were several stumps that we did originally have a bit of trouble with. And so far, every single one of them seems to have come out all right we haven't encountered any issues with the stump um holding the plow up and not letting us actually um plow the ground up and i'm quite pleased at that i was genuinely surprised i thought that we would have had more problems than we have i, I really did because we there was quite a few of them that we struggled to actually get the stump grinder to bite on the stump it would like take the bottom bit out and then leave the piece on the top if you remember and I really thought that we would end up having some problems with that but it looks like we managed to get every single one of them out and I'm <laughs> really pleased with that. I was, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised as well that we did, we, we were so good at making sure everything was cleared out. So we've got one more lot over here just on this side and we'll bring that one we just oh no there's no it's two bits here that we've got to join together because we're going to make this into kind of an island so we just want to swing round it like that and yes i know i'm plowing at an angle oh we definitely want to uh, skip through the night now so let me just stop there there we go right resting for another day at the farm as soon as this one's through i mean we could go back and we could clean up the animals a little bit more base food is now down to 18 percent so very soon they're actually going to start running out of food we're going to need to keep an eye on that Fifty-five thousand euros for selling milk that's a lot of milk that we've now got that is a huge quantity of milk that's coming in so cows cows are extremely profitable in seasons i've noticed that it's, it's cows is definitely the way to go i mean sheep could be as well i've not actually done sheep in seasons we know that pigs are not profitable currently but i think that is being looked at um that being said i don't think it really matters if you really want to do pigs then go and do pigs um it's only not profitable if you don't take into account the food that you put in for them if you if you don't take that into account uh you do make some money out of it for the animal upkeep and stuff like that um so you could put your own crops into them and you just wouldn't get as much from the selling the pigs by putting in your own crops as you do from um selling the actual crops themselves and that's given that you do get a huge boost in prices for 
uh, selling the crops in the winter. So if you kind of took the summer prices for the crops instead of the winter prices for the crops, I think pigs would actually be ba a bit more balanced. So if you if you ran a system where you sold crops directly off the field, then we have actually started to run out of time now. So it does look like we're not going to be able to do very much with the snow in this episode, which means that we'll be doing that at the beginning of next week. Because I do want to have a bit of a play around with the snow, and it's not even got here yet. So we're going to need to... I'll actually, I'll top up the animals before next week. And we will then be able to continue on with um, everything that we want to do. The ploughing will be finished. We've only got this little bit here to do, so I'll finish this bit off before next week. And we've just got uh, field 8 and 9. Is it 8 and 9? I don't think it is 8 and 9, actually. I think it's like 80-something. 80 89 and 90. I knew there was an 8 and a 9 in there somewhere. <laughs> and so field 89 and 90, we've got to just join that one together. That's it, then. That's all the ones that we can join together will be, because I'm not actually too worried about that little bit there. I think we can live without joining that bit. Um, we just carry on here. And... I haven't actually turned it this time, so just, just ignore that as well. So base food is down to 10%. I'm keeping a very close eye on the base food. I don't want that to drop down too low because it will end up giving us quite a penalty. If I lift the plow up, am I going to be able to get out or am I stuck? Nope, I'm not. I did actually manage to do it. And we've just got this one last little bit here to plow in. If I just change the plow over now, put it there lower that one in right my question for this week is what machinery would you like me to use in south america what brand of machinery would you like me to focus on in south america the dlc will get priority but then after that i will try to use every single machine that i can from the same brand so what brand do you want that to be do you want it to be john deere do you want it to be massey ferguson do you want it to be case do you want it to be new holland or do you want it to be Deutz? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. And if I just bring this one... Oh, great demand at mill for sugar beet. No, we don't want that. And Right, it's going to start snowing very, very soon. The ground is currently at zero degrees and we're still able to plow. Base food is down to 7%, so that is still looking good there. And... Um, I bring that over. We've just got to get that last tiny little bit there. And then this is all done over this side. Lower that there. That's perfect. Excellent. Two o'clock in the afternoon. It's still not snowed. Oh, I'll tell you what. One thing that we do want to do. Let's just slow time down a second. And we go escape. No, not escape. We go alt S for the season's menu. We move through. Right, snow mode is on, snow tracks are on, and crop moisture. So I've just got snow mode on. You can have it off, you can have one layer only, or you can have it on. So we're keeping this on, doing it just like this. Um, so I'll just go back out, and speed time back up again. Hopefully, we'll have it at least start the snow before we finish. That's what I would like. I'd like it to start snowing before we finish, and then we can... Yeah, it'll all be ready to like play with the snowplow and everything at the beginning of next week. And then we need to get through the winter so that we can start on spring planting. And the spring planting might take us a little while. We've got a lot of land to plant now. So I want to get to that as quickly as we possibly can. That's everything over here. Let's turn off the allow create fields there. And... Oh, uh, are we getting ready? Is it going to start snowing? It's getting... Oh, now it's come to rain. Now it's saying rain rather than snow. Please tell me that we're going to get... No, it's just it's just raining. It's just raining and no snow. I am bitterly disappointed with this. I was hoping for snow. Let's come up this way. Let's follow this truck, this car along here. End of the day, right, the base food is down to 3% and we, we got no snow. <laughs> I'm devastated. I mean, it's 4 degrees at the moment. It's, it's saying at the moment 4 degrees and 0 degrees in the ground, so... That might be something to do with it. Hopefully, the last day of winter, we'll get some snow. It's looking like that there is a little bit forecast for the last day of winter. But it doesn't look like we're going to get any snow here. So, I will finish this one up down through here and um, have that done before next episode. But for now, I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to go back over to our animals and start doing something with them. Uh, first of all, I'm going to clean this out. And then I'm going to get in and 
Start. They they're empty on everything. Everything needs something done to it now. So I'm gonna I'm slow that right down. And I'm gonna have to do all of this in the rain. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.